Hey everyone, this video on NPM is from my course that I'm creating, Responsive Design for Beginners. You can find more info about the course linked down in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Okay, so why do we need NPM for this course specifically? The main reason is because we're writing our styles in a CSS preprocessor called SAS. SAS is widely used because you can write your styles more quickly and efficiently than pure CSS. The only problem is that SAS files themselves are not readable by the browser, so we need to compile or convert them into CSS. In a real-world development environment, you would normally use some type of build tool to do the conversion for you. In our case, we will be using Gulp, and we need to use NPM to install and run Gulp for our workflow. NPM is a huge part of the JavaScript ecosystem these days, so it's definitely a good skill set to have. What is NPM? NPM is a main package manager for Node.js. It's a huge repository of mostly open source software, and it can be used by anyone for free. But why do we need NPM? Well, let's say you want to build a car. Now, you could try to make every single part of the car yourself, but that would be very involved. You'd be mining the metal out of the ground, melting and casting it, and using an anvil and hammer to form it into the right shapes, all while trying to not set yourself on fire. It would take a very long time and be quite expensive. Most people who want to build a car won't go that route. Instead, they'll start by getting all the pre-built parts they need and assembling those parts into a complete working car. In the same way, NPM makes writing code easier because you can rely on pre-built code that other people have written. You can use their code for your own projects instead of getting bogged down writing everything yourself. Authors will write the code for their package and publish it on the NPM registry. Then if you want to use that package, you can install it onto your own computer with the NPM CLI or command line interface. There are all kinds of packages from small single purpose ones to large libraries. For example, Chalk, a small package that weighs in at just 26 kilobytes, lets you set different colors in your console log messages. Then you have frameworks like Tailwind CSS that you can use to build websites, which is much larger at over 30 megabytes. To use NPM on your own computer, you'll first have to install Node.js, the JavaScript runtime environment. The easiest way to install Node is to go to the website nodejs.org and download the version for your operating system. When you run the installer, it'll install Node and NPM at the same time. You can check that everything was installed by opening your terminal and running node-v and then npm-v. Each of those commands should return the version number that's been installed. So which packages should you install? There are over a million packages on NPM, but how do you know which ones you actually need? A lot of it will depend on what tech stack you are using in your project. For example, if you're starting a new Vue.js project, you'll need a build tool like Webpack or Snowpack. And for our purposes, we're using Gulp to compile our SAS files, so we'll need to install a bunch of Gulp and SAS-related packages. It is a little bit like the Wild West in that there's no 100% right combination of packages for every single person. It'll depend on what tools and frameworks you're using and your own preferences. If you're not sure which packages you need, you can always follow a good tutorial on the framework that you're using, or in this case, this course. Now that we have Node and NPM installed, how do you go about actually installing NPM packages? First, there are two ways of installing packages, locally and globally. Generally, you'll want to install packages locally in the project folder that you want to use the package for. This ensures that when you deploy your project, it'll include all the necessary packages. Installing a package locally means that it'll only be accessible from that specific project folder. If you have other projects, each one will have its own set of local packages. To install a local package, you'll use the npm CLI. In your terminal, type in npm install and the name of the package you want. For example, to install the chalk package, navigate in your terminal to the project folder and type in npm install chalk. While most packages should be installed locally like this, some packages can and should be installed globally on your computer. This means that the package functions will be accessible from any directory. Usually, you will only globally install packages that are meant to be run on your command line in any directory. The gulp CLI is one example of this, as it will run gulp when you type gulp into your command line from any location. To install a package globally, type in npm install g and the package name, for example, npm install g gulp cli to install the gulp cli. Now that we've covered the basics of installing packages, let's look at the package JSON file. If you're using multiple packages in your project, one way to keep track of which ones you have installed is the package JSON file. 
can also store information about your projects, like the name, version, author, and GitHub repo. The package.json file is super useful, especially if other people want to clone your project and need all the specific packages that you used. They can use the package.json file to install all of them all at once. If they run npm install in a folder that has a package.json file, npm will read the file and automatically install all the packages listed. This comes in handy with deployments too, as the server can install the packages right when you deploy. When you're developing a project, one of the first things you should do is create your package.json file. You can do this through npm by running npm init on your command line in your project folder. npm will ask you some questions about your project, like the name and description, and then create the JSON file. And if you don't want to answer the questions manually on install, you can also run npm init y. This will make npm immediately create the file and set all the fields to a default value. And you can always change the information in the future. Once you've created your package.json file, you can now start installing packages. But what does installing a package actually do on your computer? Let's say you have a brand spanking new project and you need the chalk package. You type in npm install chalk and npm starts installing it. When it's done, you can see in your package.json file that chalk is now listed as a dependency. What this means is that you're going to be using functions from the chalk package in your code. And if you didn't have it, something would probably break. Now, if you look in your files, you will notice that a new folder called node modules has been created. This is where npm stores all the package files that get installed. In this folder, you can see one folder for chalk, which makes sense, but there's also a bunch of other folders with different names. Why did npm install all those other packages in addition to chalk? Well, this is because of the dependency nature of npm. You're installing npm packages in your project to use other people's code, making your project dependent on those packages. And each of those packages is also using code from even other packages. In our node modules folder, those other folders are for packages that chalk is dependent on. You can actually see this in the chalk package.json file, as it has the ANSI styles and supports color packages listed as dependencies. Then, if you look at the package.json file for ANSI styles, you'll see color convert listed as a dependency for that. And color convert is dependent on color name. The supports color package is dependent on the has flag package, and that's all the packages in our node modules folder. You can also run npm list in your project folder to quickly display a list of all installed packages and what version they are. Keep in mind, chalk is a relatively small package itself. Just imagine how many dependencies larger packages like Webpack or Tailwind might require, and you can start to understand why the node modules folder is often referred to as the densest matter in the known universe. One other really important aspect of npm is package versioning. Like most software, npm packages will get updated over time to fix bugs and roll out new features. Sounds good, right? Well, these updates are actually one of the biggest sources of headaches when working with npm packages. This is because every package has its own author, and so will get bug fixes and updates independent from other packages. But because packages are so dependent on one another, this can sometimes cause conflicts and errors for you. It's important to understand how versioning works and how to update safely so that you don't break stuff when you do update packages that you're using. So how does versioning and updating work in npm? If we type npm view chalk versions into the terminal, it'll return a list of all the versions of chalk from the beginning. For more details on each version, you can also check out the release page of the package's GitHub repository. The numbers in the package versions may seem a little bit confusing or random at first. The first public release is generally version 1.0.0, and each release after that will continue going up in number. But the way these numbers increment isn't quite the same as decimal numbers. This is because npm packages follow semantic versioning. Semantic versioning is a system of numbering software versions, with each number containing three digits separated by a dot. The first digit is the major version, second digit is the minor version, and the last digit is the patch version. Major version updates occur when changes are big and not backwards compatible. This means that updating to this new version from an older version will most likely break any code that depends on the old version. For example, when Chalk moved from version 2 to version 3, it removed a property called Enabled and replaced it with a new property, Level. So any code using Chalk version 2 would have to migrate to this new syntax in order to be compatible with version 3. Minor version changes, on the other hand, are for new features that are backwards compatible and won't break anything when you change it, ideally. 
And patch updates are for small bug fixes that also won't break anything. When a new version is released, the digits to the right will reset back to zero. For example, if the current version is 1.9.15 and the next update is a major one, the major number will change to two, and then the minor and patched numbers will reset to zero, so the new version will be 2.0.0. Alternatively, if the next update from 1.9.15 is a minor one, the minor number would go up to 10, and the patch number would reset to zero, with the final version number being 1.10.0. And that's another quirk of semantic versioning. Unlike regular decimal numbers, which range from zero to nine, there aren't really any limits to how high each digit could go. So you could very well have a version number of 3.28.45. So with all these different versions of packages, how do you update a package that you've already installed? When you first install an NPM package locally, NPM will install the newest public release. Over time, you may want to update those packages to get the newest bug fixes and features. However, you need to be careful that you don't accidentally update to a new major version that could break your code. Fortunately, NPM has some safeguards in place that will help you have more control over what versions you update to by default. In your package.json file, when you install a package, NPM will save the specific version number that you have installed. Now, what's that caret symbol in front of the version number? This and a few other symbols are what NPM uses to limit what versions it'll automatically update to. The caret symbol will update the package to the latest minor and patch version for the currently installed major version. This is a default symbol that NPM will prefix the version number with when it installs packages. This means that if a new minor or patch version of chalk gets released, if you run NPM update in the project folder, you'll get that new version. However, if chalk version 5.0.0 gets released, this command won't install that version. So let's say version five does come out and you wanna update chalk you can manually update to the newest version in the command line by running npm install chalk at latest. You can also specify a version number with npm install chalk at five to install version five. This also works if you need to install an older version of the package. If you run npm install chalk at two, it'll install the latest major version of two. This is sometimes necessary if the latest version of a dependent package isn't compatible with other dependencies. Aside from the caret symbol, you can also use the tilde symbol to limit updates to patches within the current minor version. So if you had chalk version 2.2.0 installed and wanted to update to the latest patch within 2.2, you could run npm install chalk at tilde 2.2. Now when you're installing packages, you may have noticed that npm creates a package lock JSON file. This file records the actual specific versions of each package and dependency that you have installed on your local computer. The reason this file exists is because of compatibility issues that can arise when using a package JSON file from a different environment. Let's say you've cloned a GitHub repo that has a package JSON file and you run npm install to install all the packages to your own computer. However, remember the caret symbol that npm prefixes each package version in? If a dependent package has been updated between the time the package JSON file was created by the original author, and when you run it on your own computer, you could actually be installing a different minor and patch version than what was used in the original repository. And if a newer version has compatibility issues with other dependent packages that you're using, it could potentially break your project. This is the problem that the package lock JSON file solves. If you run npm install and there is a package lock JSON file in addition to the package JSON file, NPM will install the exact major, minor, and patch versions recorded in the package lock JSON file. This ensures that the packages in your local environment will exactly match the original authors. And that's NPM in a nutshell. If you're interested in learning how to build a responsive website from scratch with HTML, SCSS, and JavaScript, you can sign up for email updates and be the first to find out when it launches. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.